Guys, I am so excited to show you this brand new scroller box. We got a new shape and a new logo, overall a new design. And this is what it looked like before, in case you've forgotten. And as you can see, it is slightly bigger than the old one, which might mean even more delicious art supplies. So yeah, apparently Scrollerbox has been doing some changes lately, updating their box, and apparently the box itself, the cardboard box, is more eco-friendly, and I think I read on their Instagram page that every box plants a new tree, which is awesome. Not that the box itself is planting a tree, but that would be pretty awesome too. And some other new things is that Scrollerbox will update their website, and the subscribers will be able to collect loyalty points that they can redeem in future purchases and stuff like that. But yeah, there is a lot of exciting changes and updates, so yeah, but we're here to open the box, so let's do that. Just one little rip and you're into your art supplies. Woo, that was exciting. It totally reminds me of a pizza box. Ooh. So we have in the lid Scrollerbox subscription art supplies and we have the little hashtag where you can share your scroller challenge creations. Oh, this is so pretty. It got like a tattoo vibe. Create more and it is like a tiny little sketchbook. It is so cute. And we got a shiny golden coin with a skull and a pirate on it. I bet this is a chocolate coin. Oh, and we got a loose sheet of cardboard paper, it feels like. It is very thick. Keep scrolling, that is what I used to say to you guys. Keep drawing, my happy cats. And here you can actually see that for every sold box, they will plant a new tree in association with trees for the future. So we have the little sketchbook and the coin, and here we have what I think is the featured artist, which is Rob Draper. And here is where you can find their art and follow them if you want to. Looks like they've used real glitter. And we have two cardboard paper sheets. I am really liking this gold and nature paper color scheme so far. So let's find out what supplies we're gonna work with today. Ooh, oh, look at that. That is so pretty. We got a super cute scroller sticker design with some leaves and stuff. We got the menu, which we don't want to look at just yet. Oh my gosh, we got glitter. So we have a little bag of glitter, gold glitter, it seems like. It's called Culture Hustle Gold Dazzle. So this is made out of 92% plant material and 8% natural earth minerals. Glitter is usually made out of plastic, I think. And as some of you may know, when you're using glitter, it gets everywhere. So it is super cool that they send us something a little more environmental friendly. I didn't know that they actually made glitter like this, so that is super cool. And next we have a white gel pen, and this is actually one of my favorites. Univol Signo Broad Gel Pen. I am not a huge fan of the Jelly Roll gel pens because I think they clog very easily, so I've been using these Univol Signo pens instead. They are super nice and opaque, so I can really recommend these. Then we have a, oh, scrollable box viking pencil so this is a custom scroller box pencil i really like the gold coating it fits very nicely with the box which i'm pretty sure it's the whole purpose then we have this one which is stick it glue pen so i'm pretty sure we're supposed to use this pen with a glitter and i don't know what's up with this bag it is just so nice to touch and then lastly we have these four Pit Artist pens in black and we got them in a small, fine, medium and broad, I think, or brush. It looks like a brush. And these are from Faber-Castell or Faber-Castell or however you pronounce it. So we have three fine liner pens and one brush pen. Almost forgot the scrawler challenge, which is something out of nothing. Oh, that will be interesting. So let's swatch the supplies first, and then maybe I will get an idea what I will create. So yeah, let's do that. 
We got the pencil and yep, it's a pencil. Then we have the fine liners. We got the medium one and the brush one. I love this gel pen. It is so opaque and fluid and nice. Then let's try the glitter. And I think I will just try to put some glue on the paper and then sprinkle some glitter onto that. It is all watery. Oh, the smell. It puts me straight back to kindergarten. Come here. Hmm. I have a feeling that I will just dump all the glitter on my desk, so let's try to use a painting knife and scoop out some of the glitter. Oop! How graceful. Alright, yeah, it looks like some of the glitter stuck to the glue, so let's just pour the rest of it back into the bag. Yeah, there we have all of the supplies, so let's just try to find out what we're gonna do with these and the scrawler challenge, so yeah. I saw in this sketchbook that the featured artist has the sign that he is writing. He really loves contrast, the challenge of finding things that shouldn't really be drawn on. But yeah, that is very inspiring. Maybe I can find something in my art studio to draw on. So I was thinking that maybe I could do something with these cardboard boxes, but I know that Sally likes to sleep in them, so... I don't know if it is a good idea to put glitter on them. And then I have these boxes over here, but they got some writing on them and they're just, I don't know. I would like to have a flat surface to draw on that isn't filled with cat hair. Also guys, let me know if you would ever like a workspace tour. So yeah, maybe that could be interesting. Maybe I have some scrap cardboard pieces with my bubble wrap. Let's see. I like to save all the bubble wrap I can find to use for shipping and stuff like that. So yeah, here we have some cardboard. This is nice. Hopefully no spider in here. I don't mind at all having my workspace down in the basement, but yeah, there will be spiders. I don't know about this one, but I really like this piece. This one has a little more texture and it is more easy to bend as you can see, but this is super smooth and a lot harder. So I think this will be perfect to make some art on. But uh, yeah, let's get started. Since I haven't actually tried and seen what the supplies looks like on the cardboard paper, I'm starting with a little warm-up sketch. Believe it or not, you can actually learn a lot just from doing quicker, smaller pieces like this before starting on the actual project. Now I know how the supplies feels and behaves and what they look like on this type of paper. And I really like the look of the bolder brush pen strokes against the color of the cardboard. It also gives me a chance to see what technique and style I want to go with. I also got to practice pouring the glitter. I used the ancient technique called glue and dump. It is very advanced. You have to put on the exact right amount of glue on the paper and then very very gently dump out half the glitter on the glue and then the other half on your desk. It takes years and years of practice to master this skill, but I think I did it pretty well.
And then moving on to the bigger cardboard piece that my bubble wrap stash so generously provided me with, and I started sketching a more refined version of the little warm-up sketch, and here's the truth about me that you probably didn't know about. Are you ready? Alright. If there were only one thing that I could draw for the rest of my life, it would not be cats, which you could think since I'm the craziest of cat ladies, but it would actually actually be dogs or wolves. Huskies are some of my go-to dogs to draw. There is something with the shape of them and the masking of the face. They are just so beautiful. Maybe it's because I had this little husky plushie when I was little that I adored and I brought it with me everywhere. I just loved my little husky plushie. But guys, if you could only draw one thing for the rest of your lives, what would that be? Anywho, I outlined it all with the finest of the fine liner pens, a 0.3 I think, and then I went in with a brush pen. And if you want to draw fur or hair, I can really recommend using a brush pen. It kind of gives you free hair and fur texture. Also, try to follow the natural direction of the hair, it will make it look a little more realistic and alive. Since I only have black to work with as a color, I chose to leave some little gaps here and there in the fur to replicate shine and to show a bit more of the texture. It gives a bit of a comic book style, I think, and I really like the look of the bolder brush pen lines mixed with the finer lines. It brings more life to the whole illustration. And then I'm going in with a uniball gel pen, and here is where the illustration really starts to pop. I think it looked fine already, but the crisp white highlights, it just brings the dog out of the illustration. And here I'm really glad I did that little warm-up sketch before, where I could test out and see how I wanted to use the gel pen. I don't like experimenting on the actual art piece, and that is why I think it is nice to have a sketch to try out all the things before. And of course I had to go overboard with it, it was just so satisfying drawing with the white on the cardboard and see the contrast. It also added a lot more texture to the illustration. I wanted to use the gold glitter for a crescent moon in the background, so I started the very delicate glue and dump technique once again. And I don't know if this is how you are supposed to spread the glue with the nozzle of the glue pen, because it isn't very efficient to be honest. I was thinking of maybe using a brush to spread it out, but I read on the packaging of the glue that it is permanent, so I didn't want to sacrifice any of my paintbrushes on it. But yeah, as this technique requires, I poured out the glitter very very gently on the glue, and then I spread it around with a pencil. The ancient technique needs it to be a gold pencil for it to work, so yeah, thanks Crawlerbox for providing one. And I must say that this was one of my favorite scroller boxes in a while. I really loved working with these supplies together. I also think it is great that they encourage you to seek for art materials around you that isn't normally what you would use for art. Now I know that cardboard is used for art sometimes and it works great to draw on, so it isn't a very unique or unconventional art supply, but I like that they make you think outside the box. I also think it was a very fun idea with the glitter, it works great with the other art supplies, and showing us some eco-friendly options. However, please no more glitter in a while now, okay? I still have glitter all over my desk, even though I have cleaned it several times. It is like it is hiding and then it crawls out over time. I find little glitter pieces on my hands, on my face, on Sally, but still I love this box and I created one of my favorite art pieces in a while with it. I just love how this little doggo turned out. So yeah, make sure to check out the link below if you want to subscribe to Scrawlerbox yourself, I can really recommend it.
And I finished it off with adding some leaves with a white gel pen to balance out the moon in the background and then I added little stars. And I know it isn't really possible for the stars to show through the crescent moon like that since there isn't actually a hole there, it is the shadow of the earth. But it is art and in art anything is possible. And I was thinking maybe I should make a print out of this because I really like it but I don't want to feel my scanner with glitter that would be a nightmare but I'm gonna try to use fixative on the glitter to see if it will help it stick better but for now I'm just gonna try to not move this drawing at all but yeah here they are from sketch to finish I hope you like it and that you enjoy this video thanks Scrollerbox for the awesome box as usual and thank you guys for watching I hope I will see you next time keep drawing my happy cats bye